All right, I had to I had to start the video, so I'm running from there. Okay. All right. Uh, let's talk about ChatGPT in particular and LLMs in um, in general in the context of should get the mic, I guess. Well, uh, we have another mic, I guess. Okay. All right, uh, here we go. Yeah, I can use this one. In, in the context of um, developer productivity, right? So how I learned to stop worrying and love the AI. Uh, well, my name is Baruch Sadogurski. I'm uh, J. Baruch on whatever social media of the week and whatever uh, name it is. Um, developer productivity advocate with, with Gradle and um, started as Java developer many, many years ago and then pivoted to DevOps with, uh, um, with JFrog for 11 years. And now talking about DPE, Developer Productivity Engineering, um, called a couple of books, uh, one of them DevOps Tools with Java Developers with Melissa McKay, she's here and she's also a speaker and she's amazing, don't miss her talks, and a bunch of other very good folks. And um, Liquid Software, about how we really should release software in this day and age. So, um, in any way, the most important slide of this talk is this one. If you go to speaking.jbaruch, you will find a page dedicated for this talk. Um, I will show it to you in a second. And it has the slides already there. It has the video. Hopefully, I record. Um, and if not, we have the, organiz the organizers back up. They claim that they record, so but let's trust them. Uh, all the links, there will be a lot of stuff that should be linked and all the links are there. Um, very easy to remember this URL because it's on the bottom of every slide together with um, my handle and the hashtag of this conference, by the way, um, and uh, GPE, GPE for Developer Productivity Engineering. All right, so um, what I want to do in this talk so first of all, disclaimer, it's not going to work. Um, I don't know, you, you don't see a lot of live coding trying to do stuff with, with LLMs and especially with, with ChatGPT uh, for a very good reason, it doesn't really work. Um, what I'm going to do won't work as well, uh, but we're going to do our best and we're going to see what can be done in order for it to hallucinate code a little bit less. Um, so we will start with general questions about developer productivity engineering. What is developer productivity engineering? Why we want to improve it? What can be improved? And, and let's see how that works. And from there, we're going to take it um, up a notch and this is where it's going to be fun. How that worked? Ah, here we go. All right. Does it fall? It does. Okay, ah, here we go. Ah, ah, not. Okay. All right. Um, uh, you see my slide? Yeah. So, um, as I promised, this is the speaking Doji Baruch. You can see here the larger presentation is for our presentation for, for, for now. But what I need is my ChatGPT. Okay. So, I'm, I'm a subscriber for ChatGPT Plus or whatever it's called. So, I can use the latest features that we will need today. And we will start with something uh, easy. We will start is, uh, what, uh, not in Russian, what is DPE? Okay, let's see what, what goes. Um, developer Productivity Engineering, hey, it knows about the acronym. Uh, field focus on improving productivity, blah, blah, blah. Excellent, fine, thank you very much. Um, and that was great. Uh, how can I improve? Okay. So this is all very naive stuff. Okay, optimize build and test times, great. Use tools like Gradle or Maven for official build management. It's, it's way too small. Why are you not telling me that you cannot see anything? Here you go. Uh, optimize build and test times, automate repetitive task, continuous integration, continuous delivery, monitoring and analytics, code quality tools, collaboration tools, etc. Okay, so whilst run, I, we're going to actually try and improve um, build times in a real project. It's not a real world project, but it's a real project. It's a Java project that has tons of uh, very not useful classes like this. 
and tests that don't test anything really like this, but they do run and take some time. So, um, yeah, I'm going to run it, um, build a clean, uh, okay, clean build. I'm going to run clean build, and um, it's going to run for like a minute, I guess. Um, yeah. So um, here are some really good ideas, and and you know what? This talk it has many goals in mind, and one of them is to talk about LLMs, where we are, and how can we improve it, but also like a real deal about developer productivity engineering, and the ideas that are here are actually very good ones. So optimizing build and test times are very important for developer productivity engineering because they minimize context switch. Context switch is the single most significant killer of developer productivity uh, by uh, scientific studies, uh, getting back to a task in hand after a destruction takes an average 25 minutes. So if your build is about 10 minutes, this is probably where most of you kind of are, and you don't wait for it, just staring at the screen, instead you're multitasking and go and do something else, it will take you 25 minutes, two and a half times longer than actually just watching the build doing nothing to get back to what you used to do. So. Um, context switch is terrible. Optimizing build and test times should be one on your top of your list of, of ways to do to improve developer productivity. Automate repetitive tasks. This is pretty obvious. Continuous integration, continuous deployment. Okay. Monitoring and analytics is also very, very important because this is how after you optimized your build and now it's great. Now it's two minutes. You can wait for it you will notice when it again becomes four and five and 10 and you start multitasking again. Collaboration tools for sure improve communication and collaboration with the team using good tools. I don't know if we can buy in on this list, um, but uh, better tools. So instead of coming to a colleague and trying to explain what went wrong, if you can send them a meaningful link, to a line in the build output showing what's wrong, it's actually much better, right? Work environment, yes, for sure. Um, you know what open spaces do to people, so yes. Um, and focus on developer experience, of course. So those are very good ideas, and uh, let's see, by the way, it was all multitasking to wait for the build. The build is actually 56 seconds. I spent like, what, five minutes waiting for a minute build. If you were just sitting and staring at the screen, it would be much more efficient, but you probably would get bored. So anyway, 55 seconds, not terrible, not great. Um, yeah, so um, let's improve a build. Uh, what do we have? Java monolith, right? Uh, a build with Gradle, uh, Kotlin, Diesel. Okay, let's see what's going on. Okay, incremental builds. Ensure your Gradle build is optimized for incremental builds. That means that Gradle only will recompile and process changes since the old build. Great. Build cache, utilizing Gradle's build cache. Very important. Parallel execution, enable parallel execution in your Gradle build to take advantage of multi-core processors, very important. Optimize dependencies, sure. Gradle daemon, profiling and analyzing, and find your task. Okay, that's a good list. What is important to remember, and I can ask ChatGPT and it will tell you exactly the same thing, that obviously optimizing build is not limited to Java builds or Gradle build tool, right? You can do most of those things with other languages and other build tools. We can do it with Maven, you can do it with SBT, you can do it with Bazel, and you can do it on stacks which are entirely not JVM. It doesn't really matter. I just happen to have an example built in Gradle because you might guess why, but uh, really it doesn't, it doesn't really, it doesn't really have to be Gradle in any shape or form, right? So this is a nice list. And now we're getting to an interesting part. Um, you know what, before we do that, let's switch back to the slides to, for a second. 
right? So we asked stuff like what productivity engineering, why do we want to improve it, and what can be improved, and basically the answers are developer productivity engineering has improved our overall developer experience. The build is a good place to start. As I mentioned, it's not only Gradle, it's any other build tool, and it's not only the build, we spoke about other aspects as well. Okay, now we are coming to where it is interesting, and this is the code. So, um, show me the code. Let's see what it can show us. Uh, Okay, so build.gradle, okay, this is, I already have Java project, but okay. This is actually funny enough, exactly the build grade, the build that I have. So, wow, this is impressing, uh, impressive. So if I look at my build gradle, uh, where is it? Here it is. It actually looks exactly the same. Java library, Maven central, couple of dependencies, and tasks, and tests. That's exactly the same thing. Wow, this is nice. Real properties. Caching through, parallel through, daemon through. This is nice. I can just take it all there and go ahead and just dump it here. And we'll see if it works. Um, root project I already have. Okay. So let's see if it helps somehow. I don't want to wait for two minutes, for like the entire minute, but yeah, it still runs all the tasks, tests, although we didn't change anything, so that's not great. Um, okay. Uh, what does it say? Test optimization. Let's see how the test optimization looks like. Okay, this is nice. So what it says is you can parallelize using all the available processors. This is a nice line. So let's do that. Let's see how that works. Uh, in build, right, right here. Uh, okay, it still took 55 seconds. We shaved five seconds out of the build. Nice. Definitely not enough. Now let's run it with, Marle with Max Parallel Forks. Still runs the tests. Wow. Six seconds. Okay, Fox. Now, I remember I told you the show notes is the most important slide. This was the most important moment. You know why? because I just taught you how to justify Max Pro M3 purchase from your employer. I took the build from 60 seconds to six seconds just by utilizing the power of my local machine. That was nice. Okay, still not what we want, right? So, uh, the tests are so much faster. Okay, I didn't change anything. I don't want to, task to, to run them as well, at all. No build caching for test. Aha! Uh -huh. Gradle does not cache the results of the test tasks. It means test will run every time if you execute the build. All right. Uh, what we want is caching, right? Uh, okay. All right. Okay, how do we test it? Enable build cache. Okay. Didn't we do it already? Uh, Gradle properties. Yeah, we did. It didn't help. What's going on? Why it didn't? Well, okay. So now, 
this is where it goes into, how do we say, creative mode, right? So basically, we didn't enable caching. There is another configuration part that we need to add, and it's obviously nothing of that. This is really just random code that looks like it might help, but, but it really doesn't. So, yeah. It really didn't go as planned. What I wanted it to do is to actually show me valid code that will fix everything, and it didn't. Now, the reason is the LLM hallucinations. And actually, up until last week, it definitely got worse as time passed, right? So the stuff like your, um, the cutout date, ugh, I hate to stand behind the podium, oh, here we go. The cutout date, and uh, for a while there was no browsing, browsing capabilities at all. So all the code was really stale for two years ago more than two years, well, two years ago. Um, it was probably okay for like stuff that didn't change in two years, but for example, the stuff that I'm showing to you today, well, it would be with, fine with Maven because Maven didn't change for 10 years, but with Gradle, obviously it couldn't work because there is new versions, I wanna take advantage and it doesn't work. Right now, oh yeah, so the browsing is back and it's back for a couple of months now, but um, the reason why, disable, why they disabled browsing is because people did like nasty stuff with it. They, by, they by, bypassed paywalls, they uh, used it for like all kind of malicious stuff, so they kind of killed it until they figure out what to do. Now they did, allegedly they figured out what to do, but the browsing is very limited. Most time than not, if you ask it to browse something, it will go there and was like, ah, browsing failed. Thank you, that was useful. So there are third-party browsing plugins that stepped in when ChatGPT disabled browsing, but they're also very, very picky on what they can and cannot read. There is like a page structure that should be supported, and if it's not, it's just, we'll give up on that as well. Now, this is all was true for last week, and um, then open, uh, Dev Day of OpenAI happened, and, and basically, apparently, it's now all the way up to, I think, April 2023, which is much better, obviously, and browsing should actually work. So it should be better, really. Now, the way you add your content to up-to-date content to ChatGPT is through what's called the embedding plugins. The idea was you set up your own vector database and then you feed custom data into it and then you teach ChatGPT how to use your vectors using a standard ChatGPT plugin. The problem with that is that, I don't know how about you, I sign up for the ability to create and publish plugins with ChatGPT a year ago when it was announced. I'm still waiting. They still didn't get the invite. Um, so that's also kind of not a way to do it, but you know what? Maybe we don't need it anymore and I will show you why. The way to publish kinda your own plugin was using third-party services like Mantium AI and they encapsulated all that. They have an um, already published plugin that is separated within by apps and then you can publish your own app which will basically take your own material and publish it within the plugin once you um, sign into it, but not anymore. Instead, we had the dev day, and basically they killed a bunch of startups just by announcing stuff, including Mantium. Well, I hope they will manage to pivot because they stepped up when needed, but now we actually don't need that at all because what we have is GPT builders. Custom GPTs, for we can, now all of us can do it, and the way it works is you add your sources to the custom GPT, you instruct custom GPT to use only the sources, no hallucinating anymore, 
and then it should work. That's at least the theory. Let's try it again with custom GPT. All right, so, okay. So um, this is my custom GPT and let's go, oh, yep, thank you. Someone pays attention. This is my custom GPT, and let's go to edit, and I'll show you how it works. So basically, the idea is that this is the, the UI for creating custom GPTs. It asks you, um, uh, it asks you, what do you want the GPT to do? And you can answer stuff like, for example, I want it to provide up-to-date documentation for the Velocity, a Gradle Inc. product. And if it works, maybe it will show me how we configured this particular GPT. Basically, if it doesn't, I can tell you. Uh, but let's see. Oh, huh? Ah, yeah, okay, but it figured it out, great. Okay, so basically we set it up and we started by defining the code, uh, the core identity and the purpose of our the Velocity Helper. It was designed as support engineer, specially, uh, speci specifically for the Velocity, formerly known as Gradle Enterprise, and we, I told it how it should provide detailed, accurate, and current information related to the Velocity. Now there is a trick here um, the Velocity is a new name for a product known as, formerly known as Gradle Enterprise. All the documentation still says Gradle Enterprise. And when I didn't mention it, it was hilarious, the hallucinations. It actually came up with an entire DSL for a product named the Velocity, bunch of code that does not exist because it's all old names in the documentation. So I tell them, okay, Refer to the, the velocity, but in the search, actually use Gradle Enterprise. And then I told it, okay, the most important part is here. Use the documentation that I provide and only use this stuff. So it's somewhere, somewhere here. Uh, based on our feedback, and yeah, here. Um, so basically, updates to its knowledge base, this is where I upload the documentation, and um, enhancing capabilities, basically I told it only use the documentation. Now, this is all pretty amazing of how it works, because you use uh, ChatGPT to create a new ChatGPT, and you work with it in, like, for example, if you go to Mantium, it will only very well, like, will be your traditional creating stuff. Like, so it will have the UI, it will tell you here, upload our files, and here are a bunch of options that you can configure and what's not. Here, it's something else. This is a, a large language model. You configure your new language model using la large language model. It's actually very, very nice. So basically what you see here is a summary of what I told it to do, and it was pretty impressive. Now, um, the most important part of it is that it is available for everybody who is a subscriber for uh, ChatGPT+, which is like not a lot of money. Um, it is available today for public consumption. You can create your own GPT, and you can say, I want it to be public, and then it will appear in GPT store. Or I can say, I can share it through link, and by the way, the link to this helper is in the show notes page, speaking.jbaruch, so you can go and try it out. And this is very impressive. And then this is your, our debugging interface. And um, I can say here stuff like, how do I enable caching? Caching, not cheshing. 
and um, it will try and, oh, it renamed it to, well, okay. So basically now, the question of our history of creation became part of the GPT itself. Okay, let's see if that will work. Um, but we can always open a new chat and just work with it here. You can say, okay, here we go. The velocity helper, support engineer for the velocity. Um, how do I enable uh, um, uh, remember how paralyzing tests save us tons of time? You know what had more cores than your Max Pro M3? The cloud. The cloud. Someone else. Um, the cloud has unlimited cores, and if we can take your local build to run the tests in the cloud, it will be even faster. Now let's see if that works. Um, remember I told you no one does that because it doesn't work? Here you go. I'm the one who does it and it doesn't work. Well, maybe it will. Uh, one of the interesting announcements during um, Dev Day was that you can actually now create chats by providing a seed. Like you provide a seed for a pseudo random number sequencer that you can will get the same results every time. You can do the same here. You can provide now, you can create a chat with, not yet, but you will be able to create a chat with the same seed and get the exact same results. I'm going to use it for my talks because now every time is completely random. I have no idea what will happen and if it will ever work. Um, so yeah, state of chat GPT for you people. The announcements are great. The ideas are great. It really should work. Maybe it will. Um, let's see how this is going. Well, same. Okay. So the idea is it looks through the PDF files in the knowledge base, and they're not that big. And it doesn't really work. But yeah. Okay. Here you have it. Great ideas less than optimal implementation. I actually played with it earlier, you see here today, and actually was not bad at all. So this was, again, a session with the Velocity Helper, and it actually provided me here with, let's see, let's see. How to set up a remote cache for Gradle? And it gives me, okay, you do that. This is not a thing. This is a pure hallucination. This is not how you do it. Um, and I'm like, uh, okay, how do you authenticate? And it gave me another piece of code, and this is not a real code. This is hallucination, that does not exist. And this is after I instructed it not to use it. And then I'm like, uh, uh, okay, this is not how you do it. And I'm like, oh yeah, sure, you are correct. Now this part is actually right. So it took it three parts to, like three tries to actually get the correct answer. And the only reason why I could distinguish between correct answers and incorrect answers because this is what they pay me to know. So yeah. Well, there you go. Um, any news here? Okay, it's kind. Did you like the answer? <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, so. Let's try it again, we tried it again, and it was whatever it was. Okay, so how can we really improve our build if it, this thing actually worked? It could tell us that we need to enable caching, local and remote. Spoke about local caching, to just skip the stuff that shouldn't be built. Remote caching is even more awesome because it can take your state of the project and then decide to skip it because someone else already run the build. So they will just give you their results through remote HTTP protocol and you will have their results instead of building by yourself. It's obviously very powerful. The most powerful part of it that this someone who can share the results with you can be your CI server. And you know what CI servers do? They build your stuff all the time. So they will always have up-to-date result of the build that you never run. How cool is that? 
Parallel testing, local and remote, you saw that, that's some powerful stuff right there. Predictive test selection, we don't have time to talk about it because we're out of time completely. Take a look at that, that's pretty awesome. It basically decides which tests to run based on AI. It will monitor your changes correlated with tests and then say, you know what, for these changes, you don't really need to run this test. It will never fail. And this is pretty cool. Flaky tests, again, something to look for and watch for degradations. We spoke about that. Stuff that you can do today for free is parallel local. I just did it and it was awesome. Local caching, remote caching, although you will uh, have to babysit your own node of remote caching if you don't pay, want to pay for something else to do, for someone else to do it. And build scans. This is your monitoring and watching for degradations. You also can win prizes for free. Or if you go to speaking.jbaruch, you will see there what we call a speed challenge. Basically, you speed up your tests, you are blown away, and you win prizes. How about that? What your company should pay for, I already mentioned, top-level hardware, because it will make you more efficient developer that multitask less, have less context switches, and do more, and the velocity or similar, if you can find something else. This was how I paid for being here. Okay. Um, Learn more and try today. Uh, the QR code goes to speaking.jbaruch. You will find the Maven challenge. You will find the resources about developer productivity engineering and the developer productivity engineering handbook. Uh, you will be able to watch the videos from DP Summit that happened right across the bay here a um, couple of months ago. And with that, thank you very much. I'm at Jbaruch. This is by the bay and speaking.jbaruch for the videos, the slides, and all the links are there. Thank you. <laughs> Maybe it works? Not really, but you know what? No, same thing. I tried. Thank you. Thanks, Lee. Interrogation table number three. Interrogation table number three. All right. Just надо выключить видосик.